Did you ever color as a child? It's pretty likely that you have. What do you remember it being like? It was always such a simple and fun thing to do. Coloring books have never been in short supply in the world. Maybe you still color. There actually are advanced coloring books out there designed for adults, which are meant to be therapeutic. Things like coloring, drawing, and painting may have just been something that was a part of your childhood. For others, these things may have been grand stepping stones to them pursuing a passion for art. There are many different types of art. Drawing, music, writing, and many more. What they all have in common is one crucial thing. Human expression. Artists show us how they feel and how they view the world in so many beautiful ways. Art is created by people and as you probably know, all people have their flaws. Some common ones being insecurity and doubt. So many people who love to create are held back by themselves and their low esteem for their own work. Some are perfectionists who refuse to let themselves create anything less than their definition of perfect. Some let the harsh critics and cynics get too far into their heads and lose all motivation. Detrimental things to avoid letting happen. With all of these things in mind, what if there was a video game with a world that was a giant expansive coloring book? One where you could color and decorate everything however you please. What if it took clear inspiration from the classic 2D top-down Zelda games? What if it dealt with themes of insecurity, doubt, finding yourself in what you want to do in life, mental health, depression, being lost as an adult, environmentalism, imposter syndrome, social commentary, the breaking of questionable societal conventions, and plenty more on the side? What if... It had cute, likable, anthropomorphic animal characters. Well, there's really no need to wonder about all that stuff because Chicory, a colorful tale, delivers on all fronts. Welcome to Games for Healing, the web series that's like chicken noodle soup for the soul. The literal comparison, not the book series. Today's game is one that I'm honestly in love with right now. I'm excited to share it with you. I haven't seen many people talk about it despite it getting critical acclaim. I'm surprised that it hasn't blown up. Chicory, a colorful tale, was created by a tiny yet strong team and published by Finji. You may recognize Finji as being the publisher of Night in the Woods, another game we've covered in this series. You might also recognize the composer, Lena Rain, from her work on Celeste. Yet another game we've covered in this series and a personal favorite of mine. Chicory was crowdfunded via Kickstarter and the funding only took one day. A lot of people clearly had faith in the project. Originally it was called Draw Dog, which is a pretty lovable name. But I do think the new name suits the game far better. The game released in June 2021 on PC, PS4, and PS5. It came to Nintendo Switch later in the year in December. It seems to have went under a lot of people's radars. This story takes place in a province called Picnic, where all of the inhabitants are anthropomorphic animals that are named after different types of food. Every area name references food as well. Potluck, Supper Woods, Brecky, you name it. The actual food has made up names. Donuts are called Holies. Pizza is called Slices. The whole place looks like a living, breathing coloring book. It's all very charming right off the bat. In this world, one person has their responsibility of giving the world color. The Wielder. They wield the brush and they get to live in the Wielder's Tower. The brush is passed down from mentor to their chosen student in a cycle. The current Wielder is a hare named Chicory. And you, you're her janitor. 
a dog who you name at the beginning by answering the question of what your favorite food is. The canon name for the protagonist is Pizza. That's the first name you get if you let the game choose a name for you. There's too much food I love out there. It's always a struggle for me to pick a favorite. I chose Pizza. You can't go wrong with Pizza, especially when the pizza pie is canon. One day while cleaning the wielder's tower supply room, the color of the entire world suddenly disappears. Chicory's room door is locked, and Pizza is unable to ask her why the colors disappeared. The brush is sitting on the floor outside of her room. Pizza gets a bit sneaky and decides to borrow the brush. She sets off and confuses the world with the fact that she's using it. Everybody assumes that Chicory passed it down to Pizza and that she's the new wielder. After helping some people with her newly acquired tool, Pizza approaches the game's first real challenge, a darkness-filled tree. The first challenge being a tree sounds pretty familiar. Actually, every challenge is a tree. She takes on the evil lurking within and blacks out. She wakes up in the home of Chicory's mentor, Blackberry. Blackberry explains that there is a great darkness spreading through the world and that Pizza must return the brush to Chicory so she can stop it. Pizza does just that, but it turns out that Chicory is incredibly depressed. She doesn't even want the brush anymore. She threw it out of her room and was willing to let anyone just come and take it. Chicory unceremoniously dubs you the new wielder. This is where the story really begins. I should probably get the elephant out of the room now. Every fiber of this game revolves around its brilliant central gameplay mechanic, the brush. I suppose you could say that we now have two games with painting mechanics that take a huge amount of inspiration from The Legend of Zelda. We have Okami for the 3D Zelda games, and Chicory for the classic style top-down 2D Zeldas. Other than involving a brush, they have two things in common. Good games. Good dogs. Chicory's story revolves around the brush. Everything you do revolves around the brush. There are tons of well-woven gameplay mechanics based around it. There's tons of clever puzzles to solve with it. I think that the developers have taken this concept and made the most of it. This is 100% not a tacked on gimmick. It's the core of the experience with everything else seamlessly built around it. You have the ability to paint, erase, and use different brush styles. Brush styles let you paint with different textures and use what are essentially stamps. You can change the size of your strokes, and you can change the color. You can paint specific objects for specific reactions. Each area has a unique color palette that you'll be restricted to. You'll immediately know what the color palette is because they're the colors of the letters of the area's name. Each time you beat an area and a boss, your bond with the brush will grow, and you'll gain new abilities and ways of interacting with your paint. The world opens up each time you gain a new skill and really changes the way you approach your traversal of the land. You are an artist, and this entire map is your canvas. What pleasantly surprised me is that from start to finish, the game will remember every single drop of paint you've laid down. You'll find yourself coming back to areas you've already painted and seeing how you did it back then. Everything you do is permanent, and you can remove or change things as you see fit. If you really wanted to, you could treat this entire game like a real coloring book. You could take your sweet time and properly color in every nook and cranny on the entire map. Or you could be like me and slap random paint around every which way like a madman. Eventually you could unlock your own custom color palette and use it wherever you like and mix it with the predetermined palettes. 
Not only do you get to color this world, but you get to draw things for it. You'll design a shirt and a hat for yourself and some inhabitants to wear. You'll design donuts, or should I say holies and sweets. You'll design a logo for a slice restaurant. You'll go to art school and create paintings that will be displayed all around. Some in random parts of the overworld, some inside of a professional art exhibit. It's funny seeing a painting you did earlier in the game show up on display in a new area. You also get to take a picture for your transit pass, which ends up being the icon for your save file. I always love having customizable file icons. Along with coloring and drawing, you can actually get furniture, instruments, and plants to decorate the land with. You can place them anywhere you want. Sometimes characters will request that you decorate for them. Most furniture comes from a major side quest where you take lost kittens to a surly cat named Beans. Beans is a bit of a hoarder, and she'll move stuff out of her home every time you bring her more lost kittens. They're not even hers. She's just being a foster parent until the parents are all found. Everything she moves out of the house is free for you to take. Heaps of themed furniture and bundles. You can think of the Lost Kittens quest as being much like the Lost Mai Mai quest from A Link Between Worlds. To get instruments and plants, you have to exchange something for them. That being litter. Picnic has trash scattered everywhere you'll go, and picking it up along your travels will handsomely reward you. You're making the world beautiful with your brush while also removing waste and planting all sorts of plants. Chicory, a colorful tale, has a pleasant dash of environmentalism in this way. There are four main collectibles, kittens, trash, brush styles, and clothing. There are dozens and dozens of different clothing articles for you to wear. You get most of them by finding little presents in the world. Others you'll get as side quest rewards. They always require extra exploration and puzzle solving to acquire. Brush styles can be found in the bigger presents and these generally request the most effort. With all of the clothing you'll be constantly finding, you'll have tons of options for character customization. I think you can never go wrong with character customization options as rewards in games. They offer a way for the player to feel aesthetically unique and to make things always feel fresh. Every truly great video game has a photo mode. There's one here, and it's pretty flexible. In a world like this one, it's a pretty handy thing to have. Chicory absolutely thrives on letting you show your creativity. It's just fun to do whatever you want in Picnic. You want to be a serious visionary? Go ahead. You want to cover the world in goofy stuff like this? You can. The concepts of artistic creation and what it truly means to be an artist are constantly present themes in the story. The gameplay and story blend together brilliantly. But what's a story without its characters? Every character in this game is simply endearing. They're all different animals with unique personalities. They're all named after food and they all speak with their own fonts. The fonts especially make them stand out from each other. One of the best characters, Pickle, talks like someone who's using text speak. Pizza's family is super wholesome and loving towards her. They're like a real family, and you can just feel the support and love they give each other. A lot of the characters are written with a great sense of humor. When it comes to representation, there are quite a few types of identities shown. There's also this one cool character in a wheelchair. I can't say I've ever seen a character in a wheelchair just casually chilling in a game. This game is very progressive in these ways. Our main character goes from being a humble janitor to being the world's expected savior. Her greatest weaknesses are her self-doubt and insecurity. She doesn't believe that she really deserves to be the wielder. She's also always quick to try to please others. 
pizza has never known what she wants to do with her life and doesn't think she can be someone of such a high title. The weight of being the wielder is also just a very heavy thing that we see wear her down at times. Chicory herself has a lot in common with pizza. As the game progresses, we learn more about her depression, insecurities, and her reasons for why she rejected the brush. As an artist, she turns out to be a perfectionist to a detrimental degree. Overall, she's not the perfect person that she's worked so hard to convince others she is. Pizza and Chicory end up forming a very believable and endearing friendship as the story unfolds. I always looked forward to seeing them interact and to learning more about them both. My favorite moments in the game are when Chicory is on screen. She's a huge and integral part of the plot. The game is named after her after all. Hanging out with her feels like hanging out with a celebrity. She's also just a really well written character. I think that a lot of people are going to be relating to these two characters. There are just so many wholesome and insightful conversations in this game. More than I can count off the top of my head. They deal with all sorts of meaningful topics. I always talk to every NPC I see when I play games, but in this one, I actively looked forward to talking to everybody. I even went out of my way to do every side quest I could find, because not only did I care about the side characters and what was going on with them, but the rewards always feel worth it since they let you customize yourself and the world all the more. This is absolutely a feel-good game, but there are times where things can get pretty dark. Things are at their darkest and weirdest during the boss fights. There are no overworld or dungeon enemies in this game, just bosses. You damage them all the same way, by painting on their weak spots. The methods in which you hit them vary. Sometimes the boss fights can feel like you're playing a bullet hell, and if not for how forgiving the game is, they'd be pretty difficult. I kind of wish they were more difficult, but that would probably be pretty jarring considering the fact that the rest of the game is so chill. I'm going to avoid showing you all of the bosses. I'll just show you the first one, which is a bunch of eyes. These eyes actually have a meaning behind them. I see them as a metaphor. All of the boss fights are really fun, intense, and have meaning behind them. They feel borderline psychedelic with their visuals and colors. I really looked forward to taking them all on and seeing what they would say and what they would do. They're all a treat. Speaking of the difficulty of the bosses, you can actually go to the options menu and change the number of hits you can take, or even skip boss fights entirely. Chicory goes out of its way to be accessible, as you'll see by all of these options. Modes for left and right handed players. You can turn off rumble, flashing screens, and screen shaking. You can make the fonts easier to read. You can enable warnings that pop up before potentially sensitive content is about to pop up. You can even turn off the wet sounds that the paint makes. Personally, I love the goopy, sloshy, wet noises. Speaking of that, the sound design here is great. The voices are all cute and the sound effects all pop. The sloshy sounds remind me a lot of the Splatoon series. In fact, there's a lot about this game that reminds me of Splatoon. I think it's safe to assume that the devs took some inspiration from it. You might be seeing all of these paint colors and be wondering, what about options for colorblind people? Well, here's the thing, the colors do nothing. They have no special effects and are all equal. I recall one point in the game where an NPC asked me to paint their house with a certain balance of colors, but there was no reward for it. It was totally optional. Colors are not used for progression or puzzle solving. 
From what I've read up on, the game's director has said that they designed the game with color blindness in mind, and half of Chicory's quality assurance testers are colorblind. The difficulty of the experience is overall pretty easy. It's accessible from the get-go, and even more accessible when you factor in all the options. Boss fights feel difficult but are actually super forgiving. Platforming once you unlock jumping can be a bit tricky if you have trouble with depth perception. A few of the puzzles might have you scratching your head. If any of the puzzles are too much for you, you can go to any phone booth and speak with your parents. Your mother will give you broad hints that will point you in the right direction. If that's not enough, you can let her hand the phone to your eager dad. He'll bluntly give you the exact solution. You won't have to look anything up online or ask anyone for help. The game has all of the answers to your questions ready. The phone booth is completely optional, so it won't affect the difficulty for anybody who wants to figure things out. Lena Rain composed the music in this game, and I personally think this woman can do no wrong. She's become one of my favorite composers with this and Celeste under her belt. Some of the songs here remind me a lot of Celeste. She has her own identifiable musical style. The music has a classical and relaxing feel to it. At times, like during boss fights, it can become electronic which contrasts well with the lighter, more natural music elsewhere. Something I love is when characters and stories are represented by instruments. It makes it so that not only do the characters communicate through speech and body language, but also through music. Our protagonist Pizza is represented by the recorder, while Chicory is represented by the clarinet. There's music on this soundtrack that I'll be going back to for a long time. There's a few tracks that really stand out to me. Lena Rain has made a blog post going into the thought process of every song. It was an interesting read. There will be a link to it in the description of this video. I played this game on Nintendo Switch and started off by playing with the Pro Controller. It felt super awkward. Then I realized there was a left-handed mode for South Paws like me. The left-handed mode also felt really awkward. Plus, moving the paintbrush with an analog stick feels a bit slow. I switched to playing with Joy-Con motion controls and it made a world of a difference. If you play this game on the Switch, do yourself a favor and play it with motion controls. It feels so much more natural using pointer controls for the cursor and you can paint so much faster. You can still play it with no motion controls just fine. It's totally serviceable. It kind of took me back to the Wii days. This game would feel like a perfect fit on the Wii. I just wish I could play it with a nice solid Wii remote and nunchuck instead of the tiny dinky clinky Joy-Con. That would be perfect. If you want to take things to a different level, you could play Chicory on a drawing tablet. I think if you're someone who makes digital art, playing this on a drawing tablet might just be nothing short of amazing. Even without precision, I think artists can still flex their skills with analog sticks and motion controls. They've proven that before. Another way to play that might interest you is the fact that there's a two-player mode in this experience. I'd imagine you're either going to work together or ruin everything the other person paints. Chicory, A Colorful Tale has become one of my favorite games and is my favorite game I've played so far in 2022. If it gets a physical release, I'm going to double dip and pick it up. I like its Zelda-ish gameplay philosophies, wholesomeness, lovable characters, writing, humor, unique and pleasant aesthetic, the many different themes it tackles, the many ways it lets the player express themselves, its music, boss fights, accessibility, the world which is worth exploring, the many clever gameplay mechanics and puzzles. It all comes together in such a rad package. I recommend it both as a quality video game and as a relaxing game filled with important subject matter. Take your time with it and make Picnic beautiful. I don't want to spoil the story because I think you'd be better off experiencing that yourself. 
I will say that we learn where the spreading darkness comes from. Pizza is faced multiple times with her doubts and insecurities, and that Chicory battles her depression along with her own insecurities. We also learn more about what art is and what it means to be an artist, and some of the flaws of certain societal expectations and conventions. I will say that the game has a happy ending, which you already know, but the happy ending doesn't play out in a predictable way. It teaches us that we can find our own paths and do things our own way. It also teaches us that we don't have to be perfect. If you play Chicory, a colorful tale, I hope that you have fun and that it will inspire you. If I had to dumb down my description of the game, I would just say that it's coloring book meets Zelda meets Microsoft Paint meets Splatoon with a bunch of wholesomeness and charm sprinkled on top. Go play it and add some color to your life. No matter what type of creator or artist you are, one of the greatest things holding you back is yourself. Insecurity, doubt, and low self-esteem are killers of creativity and a healthy mind. Believe in yourself. Be confident in what you do and what you want to do. Don't let any negative things that other people might say get in your way. There are many types of art, and whatever one you specialize in, you're creating something you're passionate about. You'll get better at it while learning to love yourself more. Good job on expressing yourself and creating. It's an amazing thing to do. Avoid negatively comparing your art to that of others. You should look to others for inspiration and possibly even companionship. You can learn from them instead of using their work as a reason to hate your own. If you don't think that what you can make is good enough, I hope that it'll meet your own expectations one day. Just remember that like with everything, practice makes better. If you suffer from any form of imposter syndrome, just remember this. You are where you are today for a good reason. Nothing is just a fluke. Maybe you worked hard for it. Maybe you're talented. Hard work itself is something that should be considered a talent. If you think you got lucky, what's wrong with being lucky? No matter how you got to where you are today, you are living proof of your achievements. Give yourself some credit. Allow yourself to be happy. If you're a perfectionist to a point where it's detrimental, don't be so hard on yourself. We all make mistakes and aren't perfect. Give yourself some leeway. Nothing we make will ever be perfect either. Imperfections in a piece of work are just a reminder that something was made by people. It's cool that you care so much about what you do, but don't let it break you down. You're supposed to enjoy the things you choose to do. Set high expectations and goals for yourself but don't let them destroy you. Being able to express ourselves in so many beautiful ways is a stellar part of being human. Sharing our emotions and experiences. Making other people feel certain ways. Art is a powerful thing. Just don't let yourself or others get in the way of what makes you happy. Seize the day, artist. Your tale is more colorful than you know. Until next time, I'll see you later. Stay strong out there.